swimming. Uh, I have heard from the pastor uh, today. He said he would have watched he would have watched the live stream, but we were on the same time as Joel Osteen. But uh, <laughs> but he'll catch us up sometime or another. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. He he actually did uh, he did actually uh, join with us, and uh, so what a what a great uh, blessing that is to have that. And I'm so thankful for our our AV team and their willingness and how hard they work and uh, how they overcome obstacles, obstacles from time to time. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, we'll get started. Dear Father, Lord, we love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together once again, Lord, to worship your name, Lord. There's no other name like the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for the saving power in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for taking our sins to the cross, Lord, and dying for us, Lord, and just what a, a blessing uh, the grace and the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will be glorified and honored in everything we do tonight, Lord. Have your way with this service, I do pray. In Christ's name I pray, amen. I can't think of a, a better place to be on Sunday night and than with my church family. When I was a child, uh, I hated Sunday nights. And I'll tell you why. We left church in the middle of, y'all remember Wild Kingdom? <laughs> and Disney came on after that. And they always played, back then, Disney made good movies. So and there wasn't no DVD recorders and all that. So I went to church mad at my parents every week. But I'm going to tell you something. I am so thankful they made me go. So thankful for godly parents. Let's all stand and let's sing three verses of At Calvary. That's right. I'm sorry. I forgot. I'm going to get so used to these screens. 138.
all believe that? Let's see it on your face when we sing. Chad talked about it this morning. Our face is a witness. You know, let's smile. Let's smile and let your face, let your joy be seen if you believe that there's power in the blood. Let's go to number two. to be here again tonight, Lord. Pray that you would take and touch each and every one of us and guide us, Lord, and just let us do your will. Pray, Lord, that we'd take this offering and use it for your glory and your honor tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some call it progress and we must conform or we will be left by the change. This new world religion serves the God of their choice, but salvation still comes in one name. That name is Jesus. in their graves one day will bow and proclaim he's the lord of all glory the crown king of kings all creation will thunder his name that name is jesus sweet rose of sharon spotless and pure lamb of god jesus the lion of judah Promise, Emmanuel, God's Son, Jesus, my Lord and Creator, who witnessed and conquered the grave. Jesus is for 
Y'all pray for me. I had to make a last minute change, so we're going to try a different song. That's my favorite. I ask the Lord how could he send Jesus it must have hurt you how could this be he said come follow we took a journey I can't forget what let me see first he took me down an alley a drunk man lay there all alone as he rose up for a taste of a whiskey a young boy prayed, Lord, bring my daddy home. He's the one, that's why I did it. He's the reason I sent my son. I saw his pain. I heard his crying, now you know, child, he's the one. Then he took me in a bedroom, a young girl lay there, all bent and bruised. I heard her cry, Mom, please don't hurt me. I said, Lord, help her. She's being abused. She's the one. That's why I did it. She's the reason. I sent my son, I saw her pain, I heard her cry, now you know, child, she's the one. This is my favorite verse, then he took me to a small church young boy knelt there too tired to run as I got closer I said why well, that's me Lord now you know child you're the one I'm the one that that's why he did it. I'm the reason he sent his son. He saw my pain, he heard my crying. Now I know, Lord, I'm. Now I know, Lord, cause I'm the one. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you, Randy. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to know that God so loved the world that he sent his only son. And through praise God that to know that we are the one, amen, we are the world, amen, what a blessing, uh, thank you so much for your faithfulness to, uh, 
to the Lord's church and, and, your, and your presence tonight. I know there's a lot of places you all could be, and I just thank you so much for, for being here. And I uh, just pray that uh, you have received a blessing so far, and will continue to do so. Uh, we'll be in Psalm 119 once again tonight, and tonight we're going to look at verses 9 through 16. Psalm 119, uh, verses 9 through 16. And this morning, uh, we saw what a blessed man looked like. In verses 1 through 4, we, we looked at a blessed man and what he looked like. And then in the, the latter verses, uh, 5 through 8, we saw uh, the desire to be a blessed man, what, what we must desire to be that blessed man. And tonight, we're going to look at how we do it. How do we do it? How would we become that blessed man? We all desire God's blessings, right? And how do we do that? Listen, this, this world is a cruel, sick world, and, and bad things are going to happen. Uh, Stuart Houston once said that uh, you're either going headed towards the valley, you're in the valley, or you're coming out of the valley. So bad things are going to happen. So how do you handle those things? Well, you can only handle them through the mercy of Jesus Christ and, and through the blessings of Jesus Christ. So we're going to look at it this morning. How do we, uh, t tonight, how do we, how do we do it? And I have two uh, points, and we should be out pretty quick tonight. Number one, we must take heed to the word. And number two, we must rejoice in the word. Please stand as we read God's holy word. 119 verses 9 through 16 and it says wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word with my whole heart have I sought thee O let me not wander from thy commandments thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee blessed art thou O Lord teach me thy statutes with my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes, and I will not forget thy word. Let us pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the word of God. Lord, it is the, it is the key to the true blessings of God. Lord, we, we know you direct our paths. You tell us how we should live. You tell us how we can receive the blessings of God through your word. And we're so thankful for that. Lord, we were so thankful that you didn't leave us here, down here by ourselves, left to defend for ourselves. Lord, not only did you give us the Holy Spirit, but you gave us your word. And I'm so thankful for that, Lord. Please forgive me, Lord, when at times I've neglected your word, Lord. And my desire is to be in your word, to study your word, and to apply your word in my life, Lord. Lord, I pray at this very moment you will forgive me of my sins. Lord, I pray at this very moment, Lord, you will empty me of myself, Lord, and you will fill me fresh with the Holy Spirit. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. So I had a, a little bit of a nap, but it wasn't real long, so instead of water, I got Dr. Pepper tonight, okay? So if, uh, that's, uh, if I get a little crazy, we'll blame it on the Dr. Pepper. Amen. So, first thing we see in verses 9 through 12 is that we must take heed to the Word of God. We must take heed to the Word of God. But, but before we get there, he says, how shall a young man stay pure? Or how can a young man cleanse his way? Or how can a young man stay pure? Is it possible? Is it possible in the world that we live in today that a, that a young man, a young woman, an old man, an old woman can stay pure in their ways. Think about all the temptations that there is in the world. There's no new temptations, but oh man, are they, are they so much easier to, to get a hold of, amen? So, so how, is, it, is it possible? Listen, Chad, that old time religion worked in the 60s, the 70s, 80s, maybe the 90s, but does it really work today? Can it work today? Yes, it can work today. Amen. Yes, it can. Chad, that old-time religion can't work today. There's a Greek word for that. What is that? Hogwash. Amen. I hadn't used that in a minute. I've missed that. Love, Brother Mike. Amen. There's a Greek word for that. Hogwash. Listen, this Bible is just as true and just as useful today as it was the day it was written. Amen. So, we, so how is it possible that a young man can stay 
pure. So first of all, let's look at what it means to stay pure. When we, when we hear the word purity, the first thing we go to is sexual purity, right? That's usually the first thing we think about when it comes to purity. But let me tell you, it goes so much deeper than that. It goes way further than that. What is purity? Listen, we must be pure in our talk. In our talk. How we talk to one, uh, one another. We must be pure in our talk. Not only the words that we use, but also what we talk about. I, I told my youth group that, that uh, I, I let Will play under this, this coach one year. And, and I would not let him play again under this coach because his talk was not pure. He was saying things to... 12-year-old uh, and 13-year-old young men that he shouldn't be talking about. And I said, he will not play for this coach ever again. So we have to be pure in the words we use, but also the things that we talk about, things that could be inappropriate or even gossip. <laughs> so we have to be pure in those things we talk about. We must be pure in our walk, how we live. I thought about that song, uh, let others see Jesus in you. So I already used uh, 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 Preacher Mike. Now I'm going to go to Preacher Mark. How, you know, he always loves to sing. I get serenaded every day in the office. He talks about me singing. And I get serenaded all the time in the office of Preacher Mark's. We just all we do all day long. We just sing. Ain't that right, Miss Ann? We just go around singing. Except for Mark's got, Preacher Mark's got one up on me. He can actually go to the piano and start playing, and I can't do that. Let others see Jesus in you while passing through this world of sin, and others your life shall view. Be clean and pure without and within. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in your talk and in your walk. We must be pure in our walk. How we handle conflict as a Christian should be a lot different than how the world handles conflict. Amen? It should be different. It should be different. When, 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 uh, when we go to watch our son play volleyball with the church team, it should be different. It should look different, right? Miss Mallory was so glad to see me. She practically threw herself while I was sitting on the, <laughs> on the bleachers. If I got a little lips because uh, Mallory came in on the crowd diving after, uh, after her ball. But, hey, we should look different. We, others should, Je should, should Jesus in us in how we handle conflict, how we handle bad news, all right? How we handle misfortune or how we handle good fortune. Let others see Jesus in you. So what does it mean to stay pure in our talk, in our walk? And one more, how about this one? In our thoughts, in our thoughts. Our thoughts should be pure. There's a couple things that Jesus said about sin. Matthew 5, 27. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in her heart. Why is this a problem? Why is this a problem? Let me go and read verse 29. It says, And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body shall be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. And cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one member of the body should perish, and not the whole body should be cast into hell. So why is our thought life important? Why is this a problem? Well, where does Jesus live? He lives within your heart, right? He lives within your heart. So if we commit sin in our thought life and, and, and within our heart, we, we start to crowd the Holy Spirit. And he, and he has no room to lead us or guide us. Listen, when we also think about this, and Jesus said, hey, I'm telling you, if you even think about adultery, you've already committed sin. Then that gives us another great picture of Jesus Christ. Not only did he, he never physically commit sin, he never thought about sin. Hey, Amen. How awesome is that? Randy made a point. He, he, he said, when I was a young kid, I hated Sunday night church. Listen, where are you at in your faith? Where are you at in your Christianity? Are you still that young kid? Are you growing? Are you growing? Hey, listen, praise God, I'm not the man I used to be, but I have a long way to go. And you know what? Uh, physical and committing sin isn't the problem that it used to be, but boy, that thought life, whoo, boy, that's where he gets me. In that thought life, amen. Hey, listen, I used to drive I-85 North uh, on the work, and boy, that thought life will get you on that in traffic, amen. Hey, so what, what also does this tell us about Jesus Christ? He said, hey, it's better that you pluck out your eye or it's better that you cut off your hand. 
What does that tell us? Listen, if we took this literally, there would be nobody in here that could see or nobody would have two hands. Amen? They'd all be gone. I'd have to get somebody to turn the scripture for me because I'd have no hands. What this tells us, what Jesus is telling us is we have to take sin seriously. We must take sin seriously. That's a big problem with us today, with the church today, with me today. We must take sin seriously. We try to see how far we can take it, right? We must take sin seriously. Why? Psalm 66, 18. Brother Stan posted this today. If I regard iniquity in my heart, then the Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me. Listen, sin steals, it kills, it destroys, and it separates us. It separates us from the love of Jesus Christ. It separates us from the blessings of Jesus Christ. So, how shall a young man stay pure? Verse 9 and 10 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed, therefore, to according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. So, by taking heed to the word, how? With my whole heart. We must read it, study it, meditate on it throughout the day, and then apply it to our lives. Our education must turn into application. Amen? So, uh, I, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about going with your whole heart, just seeking after something with your whole heart. Uh, Brother Shane, do, do, you know, uh, do you know Eddie Wade? I know you played some softball. Amen. So I, I, I actually, uh, me and Eddie Wade are really good friends. We were roommates for me, him, and Gary Dean. Actually, at one time, we're all roommates. If you know Eddie Wade, you know he is a big time softball player. Boy, he loves softball. He eats it, breathes it, sleeps it. Listen, he searches. He, he goes after it with his whole heart. He he would practice all the time, and then back then. He would even go to Blockbuster and get videos on how to hit home runs. He would rent videos on how to hit home runs, okay? Uh, and he also would learn from other great hitters. Why? Because he was going after it with his own heart. And listen, even Brother Shane, believe it or not, he would even sometimes put his softballs in the freezer. But you didn't hear that from me. But, uh, <laughs> but as a result, what happened as a result? He became a great softball player. He could hit home runs, and, 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 and he became a great softball. Why? Because he went after it with his whole heart. So if we have that desire to be a Christian, uh, uh, if we have that desire to be mature in our faith and not be that little child anymore, we have to go after it with our whole heart. Quit playing around with it, and we must go after it with our whole heart. And then we must be careful not to stray. Thy word, without, with my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. We must be careful not to stray. Listen, there is absolutely no such thing as a little sin in the eyes of God. There is no such thing as a little sin in the eyes of God. Why? Because those little sins sent his son to the cross. Those little sins sit in front of the cross. So if the only sin in this world was gossip or lying, some of those, or our thoughts, if evil thoughts were the only sin in this world, guess what? Jesus Christ would still had to take the cross. So there's no such thing as little sin. So we have to take sin seriously because he did. He took it so seriously, he put his son on the cross. We have to take sin seriously. Now listen, there are some sins that carry a greater consequence than others but there is for instance sexual purity sexual sins they they carry a much greater consequence but at the same time there is no such thing as a little sin in the eyes of God because those sins whether we think they're little or we think they're great they put his son on the cross and we're all guilty every one of us we're all guilty so we also see here that we must not be we must be careful not to stray but we must hide his word in our hearts. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. We have to hide his word in our hearts. It doesn't mean hide it as in don't tell anybody else about it. It means hide it as in protect it. Hide it as in protect it. Use it. Don't let anybody else persuade you when you know the truth of God. 
When Satan tempted Christ, what did he do? He quoted scripture, right? Jesus Christ himself, he quoted scripture. What did he not do? He did not let Satan pursue, persuade him or change his view on that scripture. So if we think about that, how does that differ from what Eve did? How, when Satan tempted Eve, what did she do differently? Well, he lied to her. He, he, Satan knows scripture. Amen. He knows scripture. He believes in God. As in he knows he's real. He knows Jesus is real. So what did he do? He said, he told Eve, did God, did he really say that? Is that really what? He began to question scripture. As soon as you begin to question scripture, you begin to doubt scripture. So he began to question scripture. If, and he said, if God really loves you, would he really withhold from you? Listen, Eve was guilty. She did not hide or protect God's word in her heart. She fell to Satan's lies in his twisted scripture. So listen, it is important. There's a lot, there's a lot of, I worked with a man that was, was lost, lost. But boy, he could quote the Bible. He knew scripture. So it's important that we know scripture. Amen? So it's important that we know scripture because Satan can twist it. Satan knows it. He can twist it. He can get us to doubt it. So what is keeping or what is guarding your heart? John Philip says, the psalmist wrote, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. This is essentially saying that our hearts will be kept by God's word because we keep God's word in our hearts. It's great to carry the Bible in our pocket, our backpack, our purse. It's also great to have it on your phone. But the best place to carry the Bible is in your heart. Amen. Amen. It's in your heart. And in verse 12, he says, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. We must be teachable. Listen, uh, I, I coached uh, Will all the way up to his 12 years old in, in, in baseball. Uh, most of it was wreck baseball. And let me tell you, I lost a lot of games, okay? I lost a lot of games. So if you need somebody to coach, but you don't care about winning, you come see me and we'll... we'll but, but we all had those kids, if you've ever coached, we all had those kids that man, had great talents, but they just were not coachable, right? We have to be teachable. We have to allow God's word to change us, to influence us, and we have to desire to retain it and then apply it to our lives. We must ask ourselves in everything we do, does this glorify God? If we take sin seriously, then this is what we'll do. Does this glorify God? Does this agree or go against God's word? Will this draw me closer to God or further away? That's something I, I, I try to tell my youth all the time, especially when it comes to relationships. If you go in a relationship with this young individual, is it going to draw you closer to God or take you further away? If we take sin seriously, we must ask ourselves those questions. And then we see in 13 through 16, we must rejoice in the word we must rejoice in the word even when it's unpopular number 13 says with my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth the psalmist is saying God's words are his words so the psalmist is saying his view on abortion is the same as God's he's saying his view on sex before marriage is the same as God his his view of marriage is the same as God's. So our thoughts on creation align with what is taught in Scripture. Everything that comes from our lips is something that should have came from the Lord first. Amen? And then we must rejoice in God's Word just as one who rejoices in his riches. Verse 14, I love this. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all thy riches. As I said earlier, our, our face is, is our biggest witness. It truly is. Our face is our biggest witness. Smile when we sing and smile when we speak of church. Tomorrow is your first opportunity. Tomorrow you're going to go to work. And, and people, you, you'll ask somebody, well, what would you do yesterday? And they're going to say, you know what? Oh, man, I went to the lake, and uh, we had a good time. We went to the lake, and we, and we cooked out. What would you do? Oh, man, <laughs> I'd go to church. That chair made me feel guilty about Sunday morning. I had to come back Sunday night. Your face 
is your biggest testimony. What you say is your, is your, is your testimony. So smile when speaking to church or, or whatever. Tomorrow morning at work, brag on God. Brag on what God is doing for you. Brag on what God has done for you. If you can't think of nothing else, brag on the fact that God woke you up tomorrow morning, Lord willing. Amen. Brag that God, hey, you know what? God woke me up. Yesterday might have been a bad day, but praise God, he gave me another day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Do you ever think about that? What, what, what do you get done while you're asleep? Nothing, right? You can't do anything while you're asleep. So it's amazing how you continue to breathe, and your heart, begin, and your heart continues to function, right? That's God. That's God doing that. That ain't you doing that. That's God. So you can always praise God for giving you another day another day here on this earth to rejoice and be glad in him and in verse 15 we must allow God to to guide our path to guide our path verse 15 says I will meditate in thy pre precepts I will meditate in thy precepts and I and have respect unto thy ways the pledge of the Bible says I pledge allegiance to the Bible God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart so I might not sin against God. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. This really reminds me of where we're at today in this country. The, 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 the book of Judges says this was a time where people did what was right in their own eyes. This reminds me of where we're at today as a country where everyone does what is right in their own eyes. But as a Christian, we must allow his word to guide our path. And we can't do that if we don't know it. And we can't know it if we don't spend time in it. And then we must not forget God's word. And the best way to do it, the best way to not forget God's word is to prove God's word. Prove God's word. When you have that opportunity to witness, his word tells us, hey, I'll, I'll give you the words. I just need you to witness. I just need you to open your mouth and witness. So prove it. Let's prove it. I'm afraid to witness. I'll give you the words. Look for the blessing of making yourself last. Look for that blessing and that opportunity. Look for the blessing of serving one another. And then try turning the other cheek. Try turning the other cheek. So in close, we must take heed to God's word. We must pay attention to it. We must apply it to our lives. We must live a pure life in our, and we must live pure in how we talk, walk, and our thoughts. We must be careful not to stray, and we must hide God's word in our hearts. We must rejoice in God's word, even when it's unpopular. We must allow his words to guide our path. We must not forget God's word. And I truly believe our biggest problem today as Christians is we just don't cherish the word of God. We just don't cherish the word of God. We think we can get enough at church. We can get enough secondhand. If you want to stay that child in faith, then that'll be enough. But if you want to grow spiritually in your faith, we must cherish the word of God and spend time. We must pray for the, as I said, I don't like to read. So I pray, Lord, give me the desire to read your word. We must make time to read it. And the best thing to do there is say, okay, every day at this day, whether it's this time in the morning, this time at lunch, this time at night, that's when I'm going to pray. And that's when I'm going to spend time in God's word. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a creature of habit, <laughs> you know? And if I, if I read my Bible every morning at 7 a.m., then I'm going to do that for the rest of my life because I, I can't go to step number two if I don't complete step number one. And then share what we have learned with others. Share with what we learned with others. I'm going to ask our musicians to come on up. And uh, we're going to do something... A little different. I, I believe in the power of prayer. If you believe in the power of prayer, let me get it here. Amen. amen. Let me get it here. Uh, if you believe in the power of prayer, let me hear amen like you're at a volleyball game. <laughs> That's better. 
That's better. I'm going to start using that one. I, I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope that this couple's okay with this. I haven't told them this. I didn't know I was going to do this. But the Lord has put it on my heart. I am burdened for a family that's within our church. And I just, as we close tonight, please forgive me if, <laughs> please forgive me if you didn't want me to do this. We haven't talked about this, but I'm burdened for the Clark family. Let me tell you, Michael Clark is a strong man. And he's a strong man because he has a strong woman behind him. Amen. There were times where this church needed Michael Clark, and he stepped up. Michael Clark and Susan Clark need our prayers right now for her mom. Her mom's in bad health. Her mom is not the woman that raised Miss Susan Clark. Hey, Miss Susan, I'm, the Lord just put it on my heart that I want us to pray for y'all. And I would ask if y'all just come up front and we're going to put our arms around you and we're going to pray for you. So as they come, I ask that they come and we'll pray for you. It is God's desire to continue to use this couple because they've used them. Tyler, Wesley, y'all come on up as well. And we're just going to pray for her mom, the health of her mom. We're going to pray that the Lord will have his will in, the, in their life. And we're going to pray that God will give them strength during this time. So if y'all will, please come forward and let's spend some time in prayer over the Clark family. This is family. This is what family means right here. Amen. Like I say, I didn't plan this. The Lord just put it on my heart. And there's too many times where I've been preaching up here and the Lord's put something on my heart and I didn't do it. And I didn't want to go home with that feeling this morning. So I'm going to ask that we pray for Miss Susan, pray for her mom, her dad, their health. Pray that the Lord will have his will in his way. And whatever his will and his way is, then they will be strong during this time, that he will strengthen them during this time. Let's pray. Pray in faith, amen. Pray in faith, knowing that God's going to answer our prayers. Whether we not know the answer, I don't, we may not know exactly what to pray. So we just pray that the Holy Spirit will pray on her behalf. Amen. Word tells us that the Holy Spirit will pray on our behalf. And that's our prayer, Lord. Lord, the Holy Spirit, we just pray, Lord. Lord, you know exactly what to pray. You know what the answer is. You know what tomorrow holds, Lord. Lord, we just put it in your hands, Lord. We put this family as precious precious family in your hands we thank you for bringing this family lord we thank you for bringing 
Michael's family many years ago to this church. And what a blessing it is, Lord, to see that the Clark family is still serving in this church, Lord, still making a difference for you, Lord. Even when times are hard, Lord, they're still, hard, they're still working hard and making a difference for you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we lift up this family to you. Lord, we lift up her mom to you. Don't know what the answer is, Lord. But Lord, we just pray for strength as we wait on that answer. Lord, I know you have a beautiful home prepared for her in glory. And Lord, I can't wait till we, she gets to see that home, Lord. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Christ in my pray. Amen. If you will, turn your, turn your hymn books to page 300. Turn your hymn books to page 300. Oh, I'm sorry. 300, you have it? Do you have it without him? I'm sorry. Oh, you were playing it already. Amen. I love this song. Do you know him today? Do not turn him away. Oh, Jesus, without him, how lost I would be. Sing with me. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without. A cell. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? Do not turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. How lost I would be Without him I could be dying Without him I'd be enslaved Without him life would be hopeless but with Jesus thank God I'm saved amen <laughs> Jesus oh Jesus do you know him today do not turn him away one more time Jesus oh Jesus do you know him today do not turn him away oh Jesus oh Jesus Without him, how lost I would be. You are dismissed. I just ask if you want to, if you feel led to, just continue to love on Miss Susan and, and Michael here. And what I say, what a blessing they are to our, our church family. Uh, they are the epitome of Blue Ridge View Baptist Church. I thank them so much. 
You're dismissed. Thank y'all so much. Amen. Man, I tell you, so many times I've stood up here and, and I felt like the Lord's telling me to do something. And I'm like, well, Lord, that don't make sense. And I hadn't done it. But it just put on my heart. So I, I pray that it's all right, man. But it's my heart's been burdened, man. My heart's been burdened, man. I know, I know. Uh,